Hi everyone. Hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend and that you're spending time with your loved ones during this holiday weekend. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy my last two-part video series of how to build your system, right? I went over what I consider were some of the most important points and learning lessons throughout my journey. And of course, a lot of the information that I gave you was information that nobody shared with me when I first started this journey, right? And that's fine. This is why I love what I do every single day. Um, I love doing what I do because I learn uh, through you know, my own mistakes. And sometimes I happen to just land on something that's special without even uh, knowing how I got there. Remember what I said to you guys during that two-part video series? It is important that you understand that every recommendation I gave there has to do with what I went through and my own personal opinion. Uh, there is, in my opinion, many ways to go about building your system, okay? And this is only a one man's opinion on how to do that. It's worked for me quite well, to be honest with you. I have built some incredible systems throughout uh, my journey. Uh, different versions from more affordable to more ultra expensive like what you see behind me okay um, and I can tell you that I should actually take some of that advice right I should actually take the last advice that I gave which is to get out there and listen to us to as much gear as possible that's not something that I have done to be honest with you um, enough and I think that is entirely all my fault uh, it's due to my job and obviously responsibilities of being a father and family commitments and you know what have you but I do I do and I will say this I'll reinforce that point it is important that you get out there and listen I know Expona 2021 is supposed to be happening in October I plan to be there in case you guys want to shake hands with me and perhaps pick my brain about electronics about components I'd be more than happy to meet many of you guys at the show if indeed it does it does happen um but let's wait and see it's still a few months away so you know i am hoping to definitely make an impact uh with everything that i will be learning from that show and hopefully bringing that to you guys but in my room because remember what i said to you what you hear out there is not really going to be an accurate representation of what you're going to hear in your own room it is always going to be way different sometimes for the better sometimes for the worse okay anyway the purpose of today's video was to simply show you a new component this is a component that i have owned in the past a component that uh i thought would be an appropriate component to bring here in order to understand how it interacts now with a speaker like the wilson audio alexandria xlf behind me um, I have had this component in the past, so in case you think it's something new, it, it really isn't new per se, uh, but it is in terms of perhaps connecting it to the Antillion Evo Griffin and the Essence, because I have never connected this preamplifier. So let's find out what it is. And here you have the Audio Research Reference 6SE. So this piece, as you know, I've had it, I believe, twice. I've already owned it twice. Great results. I remember this piece sounding incredible with my Merrill Audio Element 118 mono, Monos. The, I believe it was the Wilson Audio Alexia 2, and this piece was magical. That combination, guys, was incredible. Some of the best, best sounding electronics that I have had here. Uh, and so the reason for me to bring this is because I know and I, I'm going to be honest, I have been the one to say I'm all about clarity and I'm all about resolution and I'm all about getting the last ounce of information. Um, but that's not necessarily what this preamplifier is about. Okay, this preamplifier is going to come in uh, from a different angle. What I mean by that is it is going to smooth the presentation out. It is going to give it much more musicality, I'm hoping, much more engagement. The, the engaging factor will be higher. And obviously it's tubes, so you know what tubes do to the mix. But the reason why I'm super excited is because 
the last time I owned this preamplifier, I didn't have anything like what I have behind me now. Like I didn't have this kind of speaker. I didn't have these amps in here. I didn't have all the cabling I have today. Um, so this time I think I'm gonna give it an even better shot uh, in order to see what results I get. Now, some of you guys might have asked before, you know, as far as perhaps bringing the matching Mo monos for this piece, uh, which are the Audio Research 160Ms. I've had those amplifiers on two occasions, guys. Um, what can I say, guys? I have not been impressed. I have not been impressed with the amplifier. I really think that the 160S, the stereo version, is a better component. It's a better amplifier than the monos. And I've had the 160S in here, too. If you go look on my, one of my older videos, you'll find it. I believe I had Wilson Audio Sasha DAWs with that speak with that um, uh, amplifier. So this is the reason why I didn't bring it because I did not want to embark on bringing that mono with a speaker like the XLF. That yes, although it is highly efficient, yes, I believe it measure like 92.8 dBs um, of efficiency. I still believe the XLF needs big power. Um, yes, it may sound a little contradicting because the speaker is supposed to be efficient. So you might be wondering why do you need so much power if the speaker is so efficient? Uh, well, the reason why I feel that way is because I understand that efficiency tends to give you much more flexibility with, ampl with different amplifiers. But the XLF, my preliminary feeling of the XLF is that it will, it will play loud with a few watts. No, do not get me wrong. It'll play pretty loud, but there's a difference between loud and then letting the speaker spread its wings, right? That spread of the speaker and that sound stage in that tweeter height, especially the rear mounted tweeter that you have here, I feel that it needs more power, extra juice for that to really sparkle and really open up more. Um, now, of course, we will see that in the near future because I do have two two more components arriving. I do have a line stage with the matching uh, mono blocks uh, arriving hopefully at the end of next week, if not the week after. And that will be my very first true mono amplifier in pure class A with that kind of class A power in mono block configuration ever in my room. Okay. Um, I did have Haslabs XS300s, uh, but that's been quite a while. So I guess for the last six to 12 months, these new mo monos that are gonna be arriving in about 10 days will be, it could, they could very well be the new benchmark here. Um, now, of course, that's yet to be seen. You know, this is all on paper. Um, I'm also getting the matching, as I said, the matching line stage. So we're gonna have the Ref6 SC, a new matching line, a new uh, line stage plus the Griffin Pandora. Three line stages we're going to have in here in order to compare and see which line stage does more justice or has more synergy with the rest of my equipment behind. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, and I and I have to be uh, candid about this. I believe comparing pre-amplifiers, it's, it's just so much harder than comparing amplifiers. Much more difficult. When you have well-designed pre-amplifiers, the battle is that much more tough. That does not mean that with amplifiers is a walk in the park. It isn't. It's still difficult, but I find it much more difficult for me into my year, to my years to really pick apart different different preamplifiers. Now I'm talking about solid state against solid state or tube against tube. I'm not talking about comparing a tube against a solid state line stage, okay? I wanna make sure I say that. I find it that it is, that I, I just generally speaking, I think manufacturers have a harder time creating a line stage, a world-class line stage, than creating a world-class amplifier. Um, we can talk about different brands. We can talk about many amplifier manufacturers that are great at building amplifiers and they're not, they're not so great at building pre-amplifiers. 
I mean, why do you think that is? Do you think that's just a random fact? Do you think that's just because they don't want to spend the money? No, guys, it is harder to build a world-class line stage. Much harder, okay, than building an amplifier. Um, I really can't go into the specifics because I don't know that much about the what it takes actually to build a preamplifier, but all I know is there are more challenges to pass the signal from point A to point B without it being touched at all by the preamplifier. Anytime you introduce a circuit, like what you see here, um, there is some information loss, there is some um, degrading, if you will, of the incoming signal. Now, of course, I know some guys, some of you guys are going to argue, oh, I know a preamplifier where that doesn't happen, or go back direct, and then that won't happen. There's a lot of conversation that we can have. We can have so many conversations about this, but through my own experience, I can tell you anytime you introduce a preamplifier, something gets lost. There is no way around it. Something happens to just not be there uh, once you put it in the middle. But you do gain things in other areas, like you gain usually more bass control, you gain a larger sound stage, you gain more control over your speakers and your amplifier by using a well-designed preamplifier, okay? But anyway, that's all I wanted to show you guys. Just a quick update on what's coming. Expect the video in the near future of the Ref 6SE with either Griffin or Constellation amplifiers. Stay tuned for more. Thanks again.